Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World and today we're here on the Shetland Islands and today I want to answer some of your questions that you've sent us about visiting Scotland. So I wrote down a few of them here so we have them and the one that came up quite often was, Mark, what's the best way to get around Scotland? Like do I drive, do I take the buses, the trains, what, 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 what really works? Honestly, you can get around Scotland with taking the train or the buses getting around. They have a pretty good public transportation system. But the thing is, a lot of the places you want to visit when you come to Scotland are off the beaten track. Going to see those castles, coming here, the Shetland Islands, or going to the Isle of Skye and stuff like that. And that means you really do need to have your own transportation, having your own car when you are here. Now, that leads into the next question a lot of people ask is, how do I drive on the left side of the road? Now, for those who don't know, Scotland drives on the left just like the rest of the UK and a lot of people get scared by this We actually have videos talking about it to help people feel more Comfortable driving on the left because it's not as hard as it seems. It's just weird at first and yes the roundabouts will scare you But just know you need to make sure you're always concentrating and I highly recommend you get a GPS from your rental car agency Because though your phone will do a good job of you know getting you the GPS stuff I find that the actual dedicated GPS for the car actually does a better job on the roundabouts to tell you when to turn off and stuff like that than your phone does, okay? So that's that's from my personal experience of driving in Scotland multiple times, England, Wales, Ireland. I found that the, a, G, a dedicated GPS device does a better job. But honestly, if you really want to enjoy Scotland, you really want to go out and be able to explore places like this, the Shetland Islands, you have to have your own mode of transportation that means your own car okay now if you're going to be going to the major cities and stuff like that then buses will be fine the trains actually up here are very nice so you'll be okay with that so you can get around fine it's just that if you want to go off of the beatnik path and explore you do need to have your own car okay now the next question a lot of people ask me hey can i use euros when i go to scotland no you cannot use euros when you go to scotland they take the pound okay they, they use the british pound when you're here in scotland so euros are not accepted now having said that maybe if you're in edinburgh at a really tour shop they might let you pay with euros of course you probably won't get a very good exchange rate so you're best to have pounds in the first place okay so remember it's pounds here now my next question is people ask about what about scottish pounds are, are they accepted other places for those who don't know the, the british pound works in you know northern ireland wales england uh, and Scotland, right? And Scotland actually gets to print some of its own currency. And there's actually three banks that actually do print Scottish pounds. So you have the Clydesdale Bank. They have their own, you know, there's a 20 pound note from them. And then there's, you know, the Royal Bank of Scotland has their 20 pound note. Then you have also just the Bank of Scotland. They have their own note. And then, of course, you might just have the Bank of England, you know, normal 20 pound note that you'll see everywhere. And you can use these anywhere in Scotland. No big deal. Nobody cares one way or the other which one you do use. Just know that when you leave Scotland, sometimes I find that when this happens, it's more like in the south of England at smaller shops. People might be like, I don't want any Scottish pounds or like at a food truck or something like that. But in general, people take the Scottish pounds pretty much anywhere, especially if you're in like Middle England and North you should be okay now it, it, do they have to take it do they not have to take it i'm not going to get into that because all that matters is one person say no i'm not going to use the scottish pounds that you might have an issue so i might recommend is when you're in scotland when you take out money from the atm it might be a mix uh, of different kinds of pounds and stuff like that when you're leaving try to make sure you're keeping your your british pounds separate from the scottish pounds or i should say the english bank of england pounds separate from your scottish ones and use your scottish pounds as much as you can when you are there now the thing is if you're in scotland you can use your credit card pretty much everywhere so it's not really a big deal and the last question i got was hey mark what are some local dishes we should have when we're there now of course probably the most famous of the scottish dishes is haggis which is like you know intestines and all this kind of stuff stuffed together with all kinds of flavorings and and for for a lot of people it's a bit much luckily now they have like little haggis bonbons so like little tiny meatball versions of it try that for an appetizer to say you had haggis i don't mind it actually i actually like it um liam loves it so it's not like it's a horrible thing um but when you are here what i would recommend is focus on seafood lamb and beef okay the scottish lamb is fantastic here in the shetland islands their lamb is off the charts the beef's really good but for me i really enjoy eating the seafood i'm here you know the salmon yes the salmon here is amazing having your haddock fish and chips that's always really good we had some amazing monkfish last night but what's really nice is you have a lot of shellfish too so you might have you know mussels from here in the shetland islands always a good call maybe you from orkney you might have the scallops that are there and we've had some even some lobster and stuff like that i mean there's there's a 
lot of really good seafood when you're here, so make sure you're having that. And if you're looking for something to drink, they have their own like popular soda, which is called Iron Brew. It tastes like orange bubblegum kind of. That's the flavor of the soda. So you'll see that all around. You can grab that in a bottle or, or in a can to go around. Whiskey, remember whiskey without the E. That's very popular, obviously here, Scotch whiskey. Uh, you can go on tours and try some out. It's always a nice thing. And actually some bars will give you flights of, of whiskeys to try in certain locations, especially if it's a tourist, donate, a tourist place, which means you'll need more of these to pay for the whiskey than at a normal bar or pub. Also, one thing is Scotland has its own beers and ales. Definitely drink the local beers. I mean, Tenants is kind of like the, the like standard beer that you find a lot of places all over. But I find like the local breweries, like here in Shetland, there's a lot of local brews, six degree north and other ones that actually make some really good beers. So you can get some really good beer and ale when you are in Scotland. So, you, so you'll be okay with that. So the next question I get is a lot of people have asked, hey, what's the difference between Glasgow and Edinburgh? Which one should I go to first? Or if I can only choose one, which one should it be? Well, both cities are well worth visiting. And Glasgow, I used to not be the biggest fan of Glasgow, but Glasgow has really made a turnaround the last five or 10 years. Like it's a cool place to go. But I think as a tourist for your first visit to Scotland, I think Edinburgh is probably a better first visit because there's so many sites to see in a relatively close space that you can walk around Yes, there's hills and stuff like that you have to deal with, but there's so like the Royal Mile going up that way, you know, the palace at the bottom, the castle up on the top. There's all kinds of really cool shops when you're going around, really good museums when you're there. There's just a lot of stuff you can do, bars, restaurants, all kinds of stuff. It's really built well up for tourists to enjoy the city, and I, and I really like that. Now, Glasgow has got some cool stuff there, don't get me wrong. And honestly, for like normal shopping, like clothes shopping and living and work, Glasgow's a better city to be. So if you're looking to like move to Scotland for work, Glasgow is probably a more place you have a better chance than you were in Edinburgh. But if you're a tourist, but if you're a tourist, going to Edinburgh is probably your best choice. Okay, over Glasgow. But they're both good. I'm not dissing either of them. They're both worth seeing. And I think the last thing I should add, the people ask, is how expensive is it to come to Scotland? To be honest, I find Scotland a bit cheaper than going to England. Um, and and for people that are, their idea of prices in England is London. It's cheaper than going to London. Don't worry about that. Um, there is a very busy season in the summer, especially in the Highlands and other places. So make sure that you do prepare and book ahead for accommodation, restaurants and small towns during high season. When you book your hotel, book the restaurant as well so you have that. Anyway, I hope this helped answer some of your questions. For all of you that sent us questions on Twitter at Walters World, we appreciate it and have a great time here in Scotland. Bye.